Hello everyone, this is another speedrun startup in the RBMK reactor simulator. The previous video was a failure, it ended up with a scrum, triggered by myself because I could not control the reaction. And the, the previous video was motivated by a command by Tabletka Tabletkova in one still, one yet previous video in my channel. It was a video about the VVER reactor, which is a pressure water reactor. And she made a kind of ironic comment that I took seriously and said I will make a video out of it. And the video is about using only the center core of this RBMK reactor to, to bring it up to power more quickly than normally. Then I made a mistake in the previous video. I thought that when you use center core only, I will just open the dialog here of the controller rods absorber rod control when you select here center core i thought that you are not able to use automatic power control so this automatic reactor control so i tried to control the rods manually which i think it's very mainly by the way but i failed because i could not control things got out of hand and uh, then the loop one and loop two pumps tripped because the reactor level was too low i didn't realize that they tripped and the turbine so, sorry, the drum pressure was decreasing and decreasing even if the reactor power was quite high, like 10 or 15 percent, and I was not understanding anything. So I just pressed the AZ5 button, which is the scrum button, and I ended it. It was a failure. So then I got the command from Andy Poo. I don't know who to pronounce. It's the surname is PU with uh, two dots over the U. And uh, I'm very glad he watches my videos because he's an actual worker of a coal power plant and he knows about turbine operation and stuff like that. So I'm really glad he makes comments and try to explain how things actually work in, the, in an actual plant. By the way, a coal power plant and a nuclear power plant, they create the thermal power very differently, but the turbine is exactly the same. It's a steam turbine that receives steam to... Mm, to transform the pressure into kinetic energy and then the shaft is connected to a generator that uh, generates electricity. So this is exactly the same. So now we'll try to do this speed run startup again. And now I will engage the automatic control because the reason why I could not engage automatic control in the previous video was because the turbine was not reset. And this was highlighted by Andy Poo. So it's very good to have a, some turbine expert here. So let's let's start. I will not explain too much because I guess most of people already knows about the startup procedure. Otherwise, you can go to the startup tutorial video. The 2.0 is the latest one. So I will start pulling. I already selected center core only. I will start pulling rods in slow mode. And we see the nice neutron rate increase here by the way i already fixed sh sh i don't know how to pronounce i say xenon but i guess in america you say xenon so i fix xenon which is a poison to zero percent using cheat engine i have cheat engine running here and i just keep this at four bytes even if it annoys everyone and my purpose is to see if withdrawing the center core only you can reach criticality or if you need to pull a bit the other rods also, like the total core rods. We'll see. And if we're not able to reach criticality with the center core only, probably I will try to play with the voiding to see if we, with some extra voiding we can reach criticality with the center core only. Okay. Now let's start setting systems like the pumps recirculation pumps for the moment one in each loop feed water pump also one for the moment condensate system the first pump set the deaerator level into auto and turn on the polishers the water treatment pumps need to be started and open the flow valve we see how the flow increase this nicely that's good I left these windows here opening the valve and now that the, that the valves are open I can turn on the pumps 
and also open the outlet valves. We see the outlet valves opening. We can already close this dialog and the flow increasing in this screen here and here. The feed water pumps also the inlet valve is open so I can turn on the pump number one. Yes, and the discharge valve needs to be open too. That's fine. The aerator steam supply, let's set it into auto and open the aerator vent valve to 15%, no, not 15, 50%. And we see neutron rate at 1%. Okay, the, the aerate or vent valve at 45%, 46, that's fine. And what's next? I will shut down these two pumps because now we are recirculating with the loop one and loop two and when the flow is zero we can we can close the outlet valve okay the diesel generator needs to be in to auto in case there is a scram and we need electric power to spin these offline core cooling system pumps and now we can already go to the turbine support system start the lubricating oil start the hydraulic system which operates the inlet valve and open the steam drain because we need to open the steam drain otherwise the turning gear will have too much resistance to spin the turbine mechanically and we see neutron rate increasing. It's at 4%, 5. When it reaches 7 or 8, I will stop it. And I will open the alarms here and acknowledge everything. Okay, neutron rate 7%, I will hold it. And for the turbine support systems, we leave the steam seal stopped for the moment because we are not running the turbine using steam yet. So we can go to the turbine and reset it. It's reset and we can turn on the turning gear. We see turbine spinning up. It will go up to 20 RPM. So this is just an electric motor that spins the turbine to be ready to start receiving steam. Okay, and I like leaving this dialogue here. So apparently, now that the turbine is reset, I will be able to use the automatic control, the automatic reactor control, hopefully. I will continue pulling rods a bit. Okay, hold, I reach 8%. I didn't activate yet the auto scram control. If I do, then I should be much more careful with the neutron rate, because I think that not sure it's 10 or 12 percent it, it it triggers a scram after eight percent it just gives you an alarm neutron flux at two percent so we can already try to to activate the automatic reactor control i will increase manually to four percent to five it seems it's not engaging i think i'm a bit behind the real neutron flux Probably now it engaged, we're at 10%. I will wait a bit to see what the trend is. No, neutron flux is 12, it's still increasing, it's not engaged. So I need to, to hold, no, sorry, to insert rods to create a negative neutron rate. Hold now. And when neutron flux goes below 10, I will try to engage it. Probably you cannot engage it above 10, it's too high value. I'm not really sure. Let's try to engage it now. 
power set point at 10.5 i will decrease it to see i will decrease to seven percent yeah you see neutron rate it went down quite a bit and the neutron flux is decreasing to seven so now we're engaging the automatic reactor control that's very handy i didn't have this in the previous simulation okay ten percent so now it's about hitting the drum steam drum flow We see the water still at 88 Celsius. It will start boiling at 100 Celsius. I guess this is very difficult for people using Imperial system, but actually it's much more easy. The scale is set between 0 and 100. 0 is the freezing point of water, 100 is the boiling point. So when it reaches 100, we'll see the pressure here start to increase. Now. And why it goes above 100? Because in school we, we are always told that liquid water cannot go above 100 degrees. It goes ab above 100 because this is pressurized. Now this is at 50 kilopascal. So if we increase pressure, if we are not at, an, at atmospheric pressure, the boiling point is above 100. And now we need to increase the set point before the drum reaches 1000. Otherwise I will break the, the disc. Let's increase it to 7500, which is the pressure needed for the turbine to... It's a nominal pressure, I think, for the turbine to, to operate at maximum efficiency. Condenser vacuum low. Okay, let's care about the, the vacuum now. I will see if the condenser air ejector turns on be without me clicking this button. Because in the original tutorial from Comrade 3DR, the one of two hours without voiceover, he, he clicks this and then waits for the on button to turn on when we reach 16 kilopascal of vacuum. I'm not really sure it's needed. So let's see if it turns on without us even clicking this button. I will check the schematic to make sure I didn't forget anything. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the condenser, the condenser circulating water pumps. But heat didn't reach that part of the nuclear power plant yet, so it's fine. So I turn on the two pumps. They are in red, they are on, one pump in each one of the systems. That's the correct setting for the startup. I can close this. And this is hitting very slowly. I will increase a bit power. Let's go to 14%. And now we will connect the auto scram control. Safety first. I will need the turbine here. Okay. And we are still in. Are we still in center core only? Why is he 98.7% here? Is it acting on all the rods? I'm not really sure why it's, at, it's not at 100%. Oh, I get it. I get it. I was partially right. And Andy Poo was partially right. And no one was totally wrong. But when you activate automatic reactor control, it acts on all the roads. I understand it now. So you just pull center core only. It pulled to 74%. So like 25% of the roads are out of the core. And at that point we were like, yeah, we, we raised criticality, sure. And we were like at 10% of power. And I think I engaged at 7% of power. 
and then all the control that it needs to do after that it it does it moving all the control rod okay 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 that's different compared to the vver simulator in that one you choose the group that will be attached to the automatic control there are 10 groups i think so you follow the and a pre-established sequence when you start at the reactor starting from group one and you just withdraw withdraw group one from zero to hundred or from two hundred to zero and then continue with group two actually there is an interlocking when you reach 80 percent in one group it kind of mechanically interlocks with the next group so when you surpass 80 percent with the group one the group two starts to rise and because you have a kind of sinusoid reactivity function along the axis of the reactor so you the maximum reactivity increases when you are with the rod at 50 percent withdrawal it's kind of obvious right and that's why they overlap a bit with this mechanical interlocking so these sinusoidal functions kind of overlap so you have a more homogeneous power um, increase during the startup procedure and then when you reach the end if the boron concentration is the correct one okay i'm talking about boron and things that do doesn't appear in the rbmk reactor but boron is just a poison similarly to xenon and is used to further control the reactivity of your reactor in pressure water reactors and if the boron concentration is the right one you will end the sequence like the 10 groups of rods around 100 percent of nominal power and then you select the the group that you want to be used to control the reactor automatically here it's a bit different you have the center core which you have to pull it first because of security reasons and by the way we have the opening of the main, main steam dam control and then when you switch on the automatic reactor control it just controls all the rods at the same time okay is the way it works i think this is just a simulator i'm pretty sure in the real reactor you select a group of rods to for the automatic control it's, it's my intuition okay and the, the what happened it it thinks it thinks uh, sorry, it seems things are not right. I think I forgot this. Yes, steam seal. And probably need to click this condenser air ejector. Yes, yes, yes. So Comrade 3DR was totally right. You need to click this button even if at the moment you click the LED will not light on. You will light on when you surpass 16 kilopascal of vacuum in the condens in the condenser. So now the steam seal it started okay i have a rupture this trouble no and this is not because of the ic state fix because i have i have it correctly patched this this is because i forgot to click this at the right time and then i open i start the steam seal before switching this on i think it, that's a problem okay so there is no way to fix this rupture this is actually a mechanical rupture of a disc so now we need to call the workers to come and put a new disc and for this we need to shut down the reactor and cool down all the system so this is my bad is it because i was talking about other things i got distracted sorry i hope in the next one it will be the good one thanks for watching bye